Welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we're going to be discussing the 49ers' recent acquisition of Tack McKinley. So let's get started. If you don't watch my podcast, I go ahead and break down transactions, trades, any moves that were made by an NFL team into three parameters. The first is, who are the players involved? Second parameter is why the move was made, and the third parameter is the instant gratification versus long-term gains. All right, so let's get started. Who are the players involved? Well, I just mentioned it's going to be Tack McKinley. Tack McKinley was a 2017 first-round pick, number 26 overall, coming out of UCLA, and he was highly scouted coming out of the Combine. Uh, he had a pre-draft visit with the Dallas Cowboys and the Cincinnati Bengals, among others. He's 6'2", 250 pounds, ran a 1.6 10-yard split, a 7.483 cone drill. And people are now wondering, why did I just mention those numbers instead of the 40-yard dash? Great question. Well, if you follow me on Twitter, you would know. But if you don't, and you follow me on YouTube, now you're going to know. So basically, NFL scouts like to use the 10-yard split and the three cone trail as better gauges for testing a player's lateral agility and lateral quickness, the two parameters for getting upfield vertically and getting to the quarterback rather than a simple 40-yard dash because a 40-yard dash is typically for skill players like the running backs, the wide receivers, the defensive backs, so forth, all right? You don't see too many edge rushers running in the beeline for 40 yards to chase the quarterback. You just don't see that happening. Uh, so that's why... Typically, if you're going to gauge a player, especially a pass rusher or edge rusher, you want to use the three-cone drill or the 10-yard split. Even the 20-yard short shuttle would also be a gauge, too, as a maybe a secondary parameter. But those are the, the primary ones that I spoke with, um, with NFL GMs and NFL coaches around the league. All right. Now, let's talk about Tack McKinley, the player. Well, Tack McKinley, let's flash back all the way back to his upbringing. Well, he was raised by his grandmother at the age of five years old. He then goes on to high school and was a high school track star running in the 100 meter and 200 meter. So if you're an NFL scout, you need to take all that body of work because being a track star myself in high school, you have to look at it from a perspective that what you do on the track field translates what you do on the football field. And what do you learn If you run a 100 meter or a 200 meter, firing out of the gate, firing off the blocks. That's the first thing that they teach you. And it's all about what comes down to what comes down to technique. All right. So check off that box. If he has a get off. Yes, I think Salah thinks he has a get off. Of course he does. Now, I'm pretty sure Robert Sala has a good relationship with Dan Quinn, who drafted Tack McKinley and Their defense mirror each other, so I'm pretty sure Salo had a conversation with Dan Quinn, who's now fired by the Atlanta Falcons, but said, hey, what's going on with Tack McKinley? Do you think he'd be a good fit? I'm sure that conversation took place, and one of the reasons why the 49ers brought him in for a pass rushing presence. All right, but let's get back to Tack McKinley, the player. All right, so in high school, he was a track star. He then goes to Contra Costa Community College in San Pablo, California. And if those are who are familiar with Pumps, uh, with uh, Contra Costa Community College, Pumpsy, what's his name? Pumpsy Green was the first black player to play for the Boston Red Sox. So there's a lot of good celebrities that come out of that and a lot of inspirational people that come out of that community college. And Pumpsy Green was one of them. He was the first African-American to play for the Boston Red Sox. So a little tidbit for you. All right, so he then goes to community college then transfers over to UCLA, and then in his final season, his senior year at UCLA, records 10 sacks before moving on and getting drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. He goes and plays for the Atlanta Falcons for the better half of, what, 2017, 2018, 2019, so let's say three and a half years, and he racks up 17 and a half career sacks in those three and a half years. He then puts out some distasteful tweets requesting a trade because he was disgruntled in Atlanta ultimately leading to his release by the Falcons and then put on the waiver wire. So now we're going to talk a little bit and educate you guys a little about how the waiver wire works. Anytime you see a guy who's waived, he goes on what's called the waiver wire. It's simple, simply different from a release. So a waiver wire means, like, let's say, for example, the 49ers, let's say I was on the 49ers and they waived me. Well, I would go on the waiver wire and... 
the way the order is set up, it's an inverse order, meaning from worst to first. All right, so if you're the worst team, you get first dibs, and then if you're last team, you get last dibs if you put a claim for my services. Well, the Cincinnati Bengals, the San Francisco 49ers, the Cleveland Browns, and the Las Vegas Raiders all put claims for Tack McKinley. Ultimately, who's the worst record? The Cincinnati Bengals. So once they claimed Tack McKinley, all bets are off. The other teams miss out on the opportunity for Tack McKinley's services. Make sense? Okay. Well, he then goes to Cincinnati and he takes a physical. And he doesn't fast pass that physical hit with a pulled groin. So his pulled groin leaves him back in the waiver wire pool because they wave him again and he goes back down the waiver wire and then teams can now claim him once again. So physicals are different from one team to the next. It's not a simple, you have to pass these things and that's it. Different team physicians, different team doctors have their own system on how they conduct their physicals. So each team doesn't necessarily have the same parameters as to how they want to go about a guy passing a physical or not passing a physical. All right, he then, so he then goes back to the waiver wire since Dan Bengals said, you know what, that groin's not holding up based on the team doctor. Let's send him out. Gets picked up by the San Francisco 49ers. Go figure. All right. They put a claim in. They got his services. And now let's talk about the player on the field. All right. Well, if you follow me on Twitter, I said he's better suited for a 3-4 outside linebacker, even before he was brought on with the 49ers. I still believe he's a better suited as a 3-4 outside linebacker. Uh, he gets swallowed up in the run game. He brings an edge-rushing presence, though, which is really, 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 really something that the 49ers need right now. And he has a great motor, violent hand. So from a pass-rushing presence, he's going to bring the heat. If you watched my earlier podcast, when I first started this Beast Rider podcast, I spoke about Jordan Willis. I was pretty much spot on on that. I included it in the description below. You can rewatch it or watch it again if you haven't watched it before. Or if you liked it, you can watch it again. Uh, is what I meant to say. But yeah, Jordan Willis was a player that the Niners traded for from the New York Jets. He ultimately played in three games up to this point. It has one and a half sacks tied with Eric Armstead, who played 10 games. And basically what I said in my podcast, he's going to be a pass rushing presence. Tack McKinley, same thing. He's going to be a, bring a pass rushing presence. Now, obviously, I said that Tack McKinley is better suited for a 3-4 outside linebacker role. He's going to be that 4-3 defensive end Leo role. Leos are typically in the... 6 foot to 6 2 range, probably in the 250 260 range, and that's exactly what Tack McKinley brings. He's going to be the Leo in the 49er scheme. And if you look at a player's 40 yard dash time, Gus Bradley said it best you know, you want your Leos to be in the 4 5 4 6 range, or 4 6 4 7 range, somewhere in there, right? 4 6 4 7 range. Let's just say hypothetically 4 5 to 4 7, okay? So Tack McKinley ran a 4 5 9. So he fits the height, weight, speed that Robert Sala is looking for based on that Leo position. Remember, they signed Ziggy Ansaw. He's out for the year with the torn biceps, I believe. So, like, when you don't have players who can actually play the Leo position, you need to find and look elsewhere. And Tack McKinley can very well be that Leo Leo guy. He's a hell of a pass rusher, man. He's going to bring the heat. I'm telling you guys, he can bring the heat. And if he's not getting sacks, he's definitely getting pressures. If he's not getting pressures, he's definitely getting hits. So you guys should be excited about Tack McKinley. All you Niner fans should be excited about Tack McKinley because he can bring the pain. All right? Now, going back to Tack McKinley, let's talk about him from a contract standpoint. Well, the LM Falcons declined his fifth-year option. So basically, he's playing in the final year of his of his rookie deal. And just like Jordan Willis in the final year of his rookie deal, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. So Tack McKinley is just not fighting for a roster spot with the 49ers on the 53-man roster or 55-man roster, but he's also auditioning for all 32 NFL teams. And Robert Saul and Kyle Shanahan kind of have to find a way to get the most out of the cards that they're dealt. You know, kind of like Texas Hold'em. You can only play the cards you're dealt. You hold them or you fold them, right? So going into next year, you want to see what you have from a depth standpoint so you can kind of figure out your roster. And really, if you're the coach, you're looking at it like there's like, the rest of the season is basically preseason games. You're just playing with backups all year long, so you're really getting a good gauge. If there's a blessing in disguise, I would say you're getting a good gauge of how deep your roster is, so you can go ahead and make the necessary changes heading into the offseason. Always got to take it with a grain of salt, all right? Cup is always half half full. 
the glass is always half full. All right, now let's talk further about that contract. Well, his 2020 salary is 1.85 million. All right, 1.85 million. So it's going to be prorated from the time that the Niners signed him. So you have what six games left? So you're looking at I don't know prorated amount probably around 700,000. I don't know off the top of my head, six to 700,000, whatever that number is. It's going to be prorated and it comes really cheap. So it's already cheap at 1.5, 1.85 base salary. Now you're looking into a prorated amount of that. So it's kind of like a bargain, like a no-brainer choice. Why not put a claim in for a player that has a pass rush presence because we only have 18 sacks on the year and Eric Arnstead and some of these other guys aren't getting it done. The only guys who are getting it done in the pass rush opponent is, like I said, Jordan Willis, who I said before, in three games has one and a half sacks, amazingly, tied with Eric Armstead. And then you have Kerry Hyder Jr., who leads the team with five and a half. So those are the only two guys that are getting it done right now. And kudos to Javon Kinla, who got one and a half for the Saints. That's huge for him, and I'm very proud for Javon Kinla. So good job by Javon Kinla. However, one and a half sacks, it's only one game. Let's see how consistent he is moving on in the next second half of the season with six games left in the year. All right. Well, that'll be it for today. I hope you had what I'd like to offer. If you did, please hit the subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Also, there is a thumbs up button during the duration of all my podcasts, so you can subscribe there. And please watch in my descriptions um, as you're watching the videos because I include earlier podcasts that tie into this one. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Beast Rider out.